Hello again from the Willapa Bay Artist in Residency program. I am about halfway through my month stay here up in Washington and it's been going pretty well getting a good amount of work done but also really getting to enjoy the local uh, offerings. And today I thought it might be kind of cool if I shared a few things that I have over the few residencies that I've done, this is my third one, um, a few things that I've learned by now are a good idea for me to pack and maybe surprising. Usually an artist residency will provide you with a list or some idea of what items would be a good idea to bring. These are items that may not appear on those lists, but I have found to be helpful for when I have had to stay somewhere completely different from where I'm used to staying. So first up, usually in your room they will provide some uh, utensils or a tea kettle and some flatware so that you can, you know, make some small things here and there or have some snacks in your room. But I have found that I need more than what gets provided, so I usually bring my own flatware and utensils. And just to give you an idea, This is something that I have found extremely helpful. This is a camping pack. Um, I forget what it's exactly called, but inside you'll find these containers here. And this is actually, this is a mug. It has a lid and everything where you can sip through that hole. And then I use this more as a bowl, even though, you know, it kind of still looks like a cup. Um, but I'll put cereal in here, oatmeal in here, and um, popcorn or other, other snacks that I may want to pour out. And it also comes with some plates. So this particular one is from the company GSI Outdoors, and I have found it very helpful when I've needed extra mugs, flatware to have in my room, because sometimes you're not close to the kitchen. I've lucked out this time because I'm really close to the kitchen, but in previous residencies, you're either not close or it's cold and you don't want to walk to the kitchen or whatever reason, it, it's raining and you don't want to deal with it. So having extra in your room uh, means that you can have the flatware that you need without having to worry about going out to go get it, as well as going out and getting it from the kitchen and borrowing it and then reducing the amount that is available for everybody else. So I have just found something like this very helpful. I also bring along some camping utensils. I forget what company these are. Oh, these are REI. <laughs> um, but I have uh, about four of each of these, four forks, four knives, four spoons, and I believe four teaspoons as well. So that also helps. So you're not taking utensils from the kitchen that might be needed by other residents. And so I'll use these and just wash them every evening or every morning so that they're ready to go for the next time I need them. And yeah, so that's item number one. Now item two is something that many people already know is a great thing to have when you travel, which is a foam roller. Uh, your muscles can get tight when you travel or when you're staying somewhere you might just need to loosen up, especially if it's a place where you can have a lot of hiking opportunities or walking opportunities. A foam roller is nice because you can loosen up and kind of work out some kinks in your muscles, particularly in your legs and your hips. However, what we typically think of as a foam roller often seems too hefty to travel with. So this time around, I got this little guy. This is a smaller foam roller and if you have a large enough suitcase, it'll fit right in. So, you know, not every may have space for this when they travel, but if you do have some space that you can spare, getting a small foam roller like this that can fit in a larger suitcase will be helpful. The next thing that I have found is very great to have on hand are stamps. And this really only applies if you have the intention of you know, sending a postcard or a letter, or if you need to do some mail stuff for business. And if your preference is to go to the local post office so that you can purchase stamps 
and just see the local area, then that's great. However, you may not have access via car to the post office to buy those stamps, and the residency may offer some to you, but they may not. So I purposely brought kind of the exact amount of stamps I thought I would need in order to send postcards, letters back home, and that's just something to keep in mind if you want to save yourself the trip of having to go to the local post office around where you are, especially because you're usually in a remote area and the post office can be a walk. It could be a pleasant walk. It might not be. You never know. Uh, so just having those stamps on hand is very convenient for you to be able to send the stuff you want to send. Next up is the opposite clothing than what is recommended. What I mean by that. If you're going to a pretty cold place, consider bringing at least one outfit for hot weather. And if you're going to a pretty hot place, consider bringing at least one, maybe not an outfit, but at least one larger coat. And nowadays there are coats that are pretty warm, but are still pretty light and easy to fold into your suitcase. And I say this having had the experience here at this residency, when I looked at the forecast, the weather, the temperature rather, was forecast at around, you know, mid 40s to uh, low 60s. So I thought generally things are going to stay pretty chilly. I don't need to worry about warm weather clothes. But at the last second as I was packing, I was like, you know what, I'm going to bring some shorts just in case. And when I got here and discovered that I'm in this room which gets an amazing amount of sunlight when the sun is shining, I found that my room can get pretty warm and having shorts and short sleeve shirts to wear has been very helpful. So, you know, even though you may look at the forecast for a place and determine that you might not need some of these things, if you can fit it and if it's pretty lightweight, consider bringing at least one or two items for the opposite weather for these unexpected moments that may come up. And finally, I recommend little creature comforts, and this could be anything that is meaningful to you. For me on this trip, I brought my little Olumel plushie, and you know, it's just a little creature comfort thing. He's small, he fits easily into my suitcase, so uh, it's just nice to have something that's like warm and snuggly and cute or reminds me of um, home or something nice. This was a purchase I made when I went to Hawaii and so it does, you know, bring some memories with it. So just a little, a little comforting thing from home. And I also brought this heart that my husband made for me. And, you know, just because it was small and simple, but it was just a little piece of um, memorabilia a reminder of him, a reminder of home, and these items may seem silly to pack when you're packing, but keep in mind, especially if you're going to be somewhere for longer than two weeks, these items might be exactly the thing you'll need hitting that halfway point to just feel that connection back to home and the people who love you. So those are a few things that I have found through the few residencies that I've done have been nice things to start to bring with me. Um, they've surprised me because each of these items are things that I wasn't sure about or, you know, I, I thought to pack perhaps, but it wasn't until I got here or got to the previous residencies and found why they were so useful and meaningful that I was like, ah, yes this is now going to be a thing that I bring with me to any future residencies as well. Hopefully that's helpful. Maybe you have some thoughts. What are some things that you have found surprising and nice to have with you when you travel or go on residencies like this? Feel free to let me know in the comments below and I will see you next time.